Coffee is a great transition piece and it's also perfect for year round. It has multiple options included in it. You can choose short sleeve, three quarter sleeve, long sleeve. It has a simple back and it also has either hip or tunic length. It's one of my favorites for my girls to layer over dresses, to wear to school, and it's just a really, really great layering piece or just transitioning through different seasons. So I thought it would be a perfect sew along. Now let's talk about our fabrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple of examples and you can also look at examples in our main group if you would like to see different examples from our testers or others that have sewn them up in the group to get an idea of what different fabrics look like on them. So this one I made, I used a custom French terry. It's a little bit thicker. I did short sleeves. And this is just a layering one for over dresses for my daughter for school. But the French terry worked perfect for this one with the simple back. Another option is sweater knit. And this is probably my favorite fabric to use for the coffee cardigan. Just make sure it meets the fabric requirements, which the requirements for this pattern is a 50% two-way stretch knit. So you can use things like French terry, cotton lycra, sweater knit, rib knit, things like that, as long as they meet the requirements. So this one, like I mentioned, is a sweater knit, and I really like sweater knits for the ruffle backs because it just gives it that good drape and looks really nice. Now, my fabric I'm using for this pattern, or for this sew along, is from our fabric sponsor, and it is a ribbed sweater knit. It's really, really pretty. If you haven't checked out our fabric sponsor yet, make sure to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you which pieces you will need. So for the front piece, this is the front, either choose hip or tunic length, and then you will need two pieces mirrored. So two of the front pieces mirrored. For the sleeves, once you pick your sleeve options, you will need two of your sleeves. I'm going to go ahead and do long sleeves. One thing's to make sure when you are cutting out your sleeve pieces, make sure you put those notches or mark those gathering markings. Another thing that you will need, once you decide on the back option that you want to do, so if you are not doing the ruffle option, you will just cut your solid back option in either hip or tunic length. And then if you are doing the ruffle option, the ruffle option, you will need one of the top back pieces, and then you will need the ruffle. Make sure you cut at either the hip or the tunic lengths again. And when you are cutting this piece out, make sure you mark the little gathering marks that are on the pattern piece. Once you have that, you will also need facing. So here are my facing pieces. I have one of the back facings. I have two of my front cut mirrored, my front facing, and then I have my ruffle bottom facing. So you will pick the back facing based off of which option you chose. You will also need knit interfacing for this pattern, and you will cut your interfacing for the pattern pieces as well. You will do it for the back neck and then the two front necklines. So you will cut the interfacing to match those as well. We are going to be preparing our facings, and if you are doing the ruffle back option, we will be prepping our ruffle backs as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ruffle back out of the way for a minute, and we are going to start with our facings. The first thing you are going to do is put your facings wrong sides up.
and you are going to take your interfacing and apply it to the wrong side of your facing piece. Now a little designer tip, I didn't do it this time, but I definitely will do it next time, is you can go ahead and apply the interfacing before you cut your pieces and it will make sure everything lines up nice and neat. So go ahead and apply your interfacing. I have my interfacing applied to the wrong side of my facing pieces. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the back one right sides up. And then I'm going to place the front and just line up the shoulder seams. Pin or clip it in place and repeat with the other side. Next, we are going to take it to our sewing machine and sew along these top edges using a straight stitch. I have both of my seams sewn up. The next thing we are going to do is going to press these seams open. So go ahead and take this to your ironing board and press the seams open. Once you have your seams pressed open, turn it right sides up. You will take one of your ruffle body pieces and place it right sides together on the right side, right sides together, matching up the short ends. Then you will take this to your sewing machine and sew a straight stitch right here and press the seam open when you are done. I have my facing attached here. I pressed my seam open. The next thing we are going to do is find the bottom of this. We are going to take our other body facing piece and put it right sides together, matching up the short edges. Then again, take this to your sewing machine and sew a straight stitch here. Just like you did with the other seams, once you have that sewn together, go ahead and press the seam open there as well. And we are done prepping our facing. You will end up with one long open-ended facing consisting of the neck facing pieces and the two body ones. Next, we are going to prepare our ruffle back pieces. The first thing we are going to do, this piece is a little big so I can't really get it all in the frame. You will take the marking from your pattern piece, start on one side, and sew two rows of gathering stitches from the one side all the way to your other marking. And you will be doing this across the top of your ruffle back piece. Once you have your two rows of gathering stitches, go ahead and set this piece aside for now. I went ahead and used my serger. I find it easier sometimes to use that for gathering. It does the same concept, gives you two rows of the gathering stitches. If you need any help with that, we have a video on our YouTube channel. Or, or you can do the typical, just sew two rows of gathering stitches on your sewing machine all the way down. Both work perfectly fine. Next, take our back top bodice piece. We are going to take this to our sewing machine and sew a stay stitch all the way along the bottom using a quarter inch seam allowance. I have my stay stitch along the bottom curve of my top back bodice piece and I have my rows of gathering stitches the next thing we are going to do is going to pull our gathering threads to make the bottom piece match up with the top. Yes. 
Once you have your piece gathered to match the bottom curve of your top piece, we are going to put it right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and find the center of this piece and mark that. And then I'm going to find the center of my ruffle piece. And mark that as well. I like to start at the center and work my way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and match up the center. And then continue to match up the edges all the way around and pinning or clipping it in place. Once everything is pinned or clipped in place, go ahead and take it to your serger or your sewing machine and sew it in place. I have my seam all sewn together. Something to note, if you did use a sewing machine, you will want to make sure you trim your seam allowance and clip your curves. Next, we're going to take our bodice. You will take it to your ironing board, press the seam allowance up, and then take it to either your sewing machine or your cover stitch and go ahead and top stitch along this back curve. Okay, I have my seam all top stitched. Once you are done with this, you are good to go for today. And this piece for the remainder of the sew along will now be referred to as your back piece. We are going to be constructing our bodices, attaching our sleeves, and sewing up our side seams. The pieces you will need for today is your front bodice pieces, your back bodice piece, and your sleeves. Now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to place our back bodice piece right sides up, whether you have the ruffle back or the simple back. It's going to be the same steps for everything. Go ahead and place that right sides up. Take your front bodice piece and match it up right sides together. Match up the shoulder seams. Repeat for the other side. We are going to pin or clip this in place and then take it to our serger or our sewing machine and sew it in place. I have my shoulder seams all sewn in place. Something to know is if you used your sewing machine for this step, make sure to press the seams open. I'm gonna put this aside for right now and we are going to prep our sleeves. You are going to take your sleeves and sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top curve between the two markings. There are markings on your pattern piece. Make sure to mark those when you are cutting out your pieces. I like to do just little triangle notches. You can also use pens or anything else you would like just to remember those spots. Okay, I have my gathering stitches on the top curve of both my sleeves. Again, I used my serger for this. I like using it when gathering knit fabrics. You can use your sewing machine and sew the two rows of gathering stitches as well. The next thing we are going to do is open our bodice. Then take one of our sleeves and we are going to pull our gathering stitches to match up with the curve.
Once you have it pinned or clipped in place, repeat with the other side, then take it to your serger or your sewing machine and sew in place. I have both of my sleeve pieces sewn in place. If you used a sewing machine, make sure to trim your seam allowance and clip the curves. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to match up our front and back bodice side pieces and match up our sleeve then pin or clip this in place and take it to your serger or your sewing machine and sew it in place. Then you will repeat for the other side. Go ahead and match up the bodice sides, match up the sleeve, pin or clip it in place, and take it to your surgery, your sewing machine, and sew in place. Okay, I have my side seams all sewn together. The next thing we are going to do, I already did it here, but it's really quick and simple, is you are going to fold the sleeve edge wrong sides over, and you will fold it over a half an inch. And then you are going to take it to your sewing machine or your cover stitch, and so three eighths from the folded edge. Once you have both sides of your sleeves hemmed, you are done for today. we are going to attach our facing to our bodice. The first thing we need to do is find the middle of the back neckline on the facing piece. So here's the facing piece that I have and I'm gonna find the middle of the back neckline. Go ahead and mark this. And then we are going to do the same thing. I'm gonna turn it inside out to make it easier and then find the back center of the neckline and mark it with a clip. Then go ahead and Lay your cardigan out. Then you are going to take that middle marking that you just matched up and mark it up with the back neckline. Match up the shoulder seams and then match, continue matching up all along the top of the neckline. Then continue pinning or clipping 
all the way around your entire cardigan. So take your facing piece, make sure it is right sides together, and then just continue clipping or pinning all the way around. Your facing piece is going to be a little bit longer than your cardigan. So you'll have a little bit of extra hang at the end and that is completely normal. Once you have your facing completely pinned or clipped all the way around, you are going to stitch all the way around the edge and then you are going to leave, here's the opening on the facing that was not connected. You are going to leave that open and unstitched about three quarters of an inch from each side. Okay, I have my facing sewn all the way around except for these two little areas that I left a quarter inch on each side. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to match these up just like this. I don't know if you can see. So you're going to pull the two ends together, right sides together until they match up. You'll need to trim your facing piece a little bit. So it's just like this when you match it up. I don't know if you can see that. And then we are going to stitch right along where they meet up. Okay, I stitched my two facing pieces together. I just used a straight stitch and stitched right along to connect them. And just to make a note, you are not sewing the bodice at this time. You are just sewing those two facing pieces together. Once you have those together, go ahead and press your seam open and then continue to stitch all the way down and connect your facing to your bodice. Okay, once you have the rest of your facing all sewn up and enclosed, then go ahead, I used a serger to sew my facing onto my bodice, but if you used a sewing machine, then go ahead and trim your seam allowances and clip your curves. Then the next thing we are going to do is we're going to turn our facing right sides out. Once you have your facing completely turned right sides out, take it to your ironing board and give it a good press. Okay, once you have your facing all turned right sides out, you gave it a good press. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to top stitch all the way around our cardigan using a three quarters inch hem allowance. So go ahead and take it to your sewing machine or your cover stitch and top stitch all the way around. Okay, I have my cardigan top stitched all the way around. Once you are done with that, give the seam a good press and you are good to go for today. We are going to be finishing up our cardigans and adding either buttons or snaps. Now the pattern tutorial has snaps listed and it's recommended to use the snaps just because it's such a smaller area here. If you would like you can try to do a smaller buttonhole and add some small buttons there. I think it would look great also. 
For mine, I am just going to do one snap at the top. I just do that one snap to keep it in place and then my girls can easily get it on and off really quickly just with the one snap versus multiple snaps. We are going to overlap these front bodice pieces three quarters of an inch. Then you will mark your top marking for your snap right up at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place. So go ahead and mark your top one, and then you are going to evenly space out three or four snaps, depending on your preference and the size you are making. Okay, I have my first snap up here. And I think on this one, I am actually gonna add one more. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure down and mark where I want the second one. And once I have my marking, I'm gonna do one more about right here. Go ahead and do my snap. And there we go. I have my two snaps all in place and I am all done. Just add as many or as less snaps as you would like or buttonholes and you are all finished. I hope you enjoyed this sew along and I can't wait to see everyone's cardigans.